guess it's time for us to go to. Let us go to Old Odd next. to go to the Royal Promenade. There it is. Behold, tis the Sultana Nanamo herself, and Roban as well. souls of flame, drawn to the bosom of the desert, where the fire burns brightest and shall rage forevermore. Hurrah! Rauban! Where since antiquity, under the sage and judicious rule of the Ul dynasty, we have wrought sand into gold, where by the grace and glory of Naldhar have our brave sons and daughters flourished and prospered. I speak of Ulda! There, at the Flame General's back, flies the Grand Company's standard. Note the sigil. The golden scales of order balance the jewel of prosperity with the flame of might. Great and many are the gifts our nation has given the realm. In Eorzea's darkest hour, on the killing fields of Cartano, none spent more in blood and gold than we. Thus was the Seventh Imperial Legion laid low. So that's how it happened. How soon history forgets. Yet many left our gates never to return. Let us pray for our absent brothers and sisters that they might know happiness in the great beyond, as Thor's honored guests. If the fates were fair, the price we paid that day would have bought us victory. Alas, they are not. And now, but five years into this seventh umbral era, the spirit of sacrifice which granted us our strength is all but dead. Look around you. What do you see? A people divided, downtrodden, and enthralled. Where are the merciful alms of the rich? Where is the just steel of the righteous? I ask you, is this the great nation our brothers and sisters gave their lives to save? You who call this living, dishonor the name of the immortal flames. It is but a slow death. 
Our enemies surround us. The savage hordes of the Amalja wait beside our roads, strangling the lifelines of trade. This sounds very military-esque. Meanwhile, the Garleans make mock of our borders and despoil our land of its natural wealth. We stand on a precipice, yet we do not act. Whether trader or soldier, monetarist or royalist, all must recognize that a divided Uldar stands to fall. Victory and fortune walk hand in hand. Ye who seek glory and wealth, look not to what little you can snatch from your neighbor, but to the boundless wealth of the world beyond. Now is the time to unite. Now is the time to ride forth. In the name of the Sultana, I beseech you. Line not your own coffers, but those of the immortal flames. Seek not to prosper from Uldar, but to restore her to prosperity. So don't take care of yourself, but give to the military. Yeah, not my thing. As the realm prospers, so shall Uldar. As Uldar prospers, so shall her people. This is a very, uh, what sort I'm looking for? Trickle down economics kind of a thinking. Yeah, for Uldar. Together we are one. Your grace. Raubon? People of Ulda, I, Nanimo, 17th in the line of Ul, address you. Much has been made of the wealth of Ulda. Yet those who measure that wealth in coins and carrots are gravely deceived. For the true wealth of Ulda lies in the health happiness and hopes of her people not gonna lie it's really cute that she sits on his arm beloved subjects i bid you raise aloft the torch of Ulda, that her flames might serve as a beacon for all eosia to see long live nanamo glory to the sultana for victory and fortune stride fearless into the inferno for we are by fire reborn! Yeah, not very heart moving for me. The time is now! I believe I believe. Fancy meeting you again. The Yildons have a long history of conflict with the Amal Ja, the beast tribe that worships a primal Ifrit. Judging by your look of distaste, I take it you have encountered them. The old dons do not shy from confrontation. If aught threatens their precious prosperity, they will seek to crush it. So they have dealt with Ifrit thus far, smothering his flames each time he has stoked to life. Yet he is but one of several problems. Though they have been quiet these past five years, the Gallerlings have not gone away. Meanwhile, refugees continue to arrive in droves, and Uldar has no clear policy on how to deal with them. After all, not even the Sultanist coffers are bottomless, and even assuming that they had the coin, resources will ever be finite. Which brings me back to the subject of Ifrit. It has been observed that the Amalja are summoning him with ever-increasing frequency. Every time they do so, the Uldans send their forces to smite the primal, and even they are invariably su uh, succeed. Each victory is brought with blood, and the war of, of attrition which they cannot well sustain. Small wonder, then, that the Immortal Flames are eager to recruit more members. At such a desperate hour, an adventurer of your experience would be a most welcome addition of the ranks.
seems like she's always eager to lead first. That only leaves us with uh, Limsa Lamensa. Okay, so then we need to go this way. Here to attend the remembrance service. Be quick, the Admiral is due to give her address at any moment. Alright, let's go in then. The Galleons are another matter altogether. So much for our alliance. It's sunk beyond the seabed. Brothers and sisters of the sea, hearken unto me. Look upon this, our mighty Crimson Standard, and tell me your hearts do not swell with pride. Seven hundred summers have come and gone since our forefathers first ran aground in this fertile bay. In that time, guided by the Mother of Oceans, Limsa Lominsa has grown from humble fishing village to uncontested ruler of the five seas and beyond. Did you look as the Admiral bid you? It is a rather stirring standard, I must say. Um, kind of plain if you ask me. The Crimson Field is meant to signify the blood of fallen crewmates, while the Black Longship represents a pirate vessel. Yeah, that seems very piratey of them. When the Galian Empire marched upon Eorzea, we assembled beneath the Maelstrom Standard, and our Grand Company was reborn. All answered the call, from the Knights of the Barracuda to Hilthia's bloody executioners. And together, we met our would-be conquerors upon the field of Cartano. That day, the world bore witness to the united strength of Limsa Lominsa. I swear to you, no army ever fought harder or with more courage. Yet many of ours did not survive. Join me now in remembering those who fought in the name of freedom and fell. May their souls be returned to the sea. Freedom. Yes, they have always been rather fond of their freedom. As most pirates are. Much as the beast tribes have. A small wonder. Beneath the surface, one would struggle to tell them apart. It has been five long years since the Calamity struck. Five long years of tireless rebuilding. Yet still the wounds of the Calamity fester and weep. But when I stand atop the mizzenmast and gaze out upon our battered and broken vessel, I see an undying spirit. Did we not build all this from the wreck of the Galadian all those centuries ago? Shall we not do so again? Yet there are those who would see this ship of ours sink beneath the waves of the restless Rotano. The Sahagin creep ashore seeking blood for their accursed god. Those fish the bastards. Have risen? While the mines the of Ogumaro uh, spew forth cobalt and push ever south, despoiling our lands as they go. These savage beast tribes will be the first waves to crash against our creaking hull. 
And then I'll be the ones that follow Titan. And behind them swells the grim tide of the Garlean Empire. Even now, the Kurs fly their flags within our borders. Doubt not, but that they will be upon us ere long. We are well nigh surrounded. Yet there are those among us who would rather turn their swords against their crewmates than our cannons against our foes. How can we hope to repel our many enemies when mutiny breeds below deck? There is but one course left to us. One bearing that will bring us victory over the Beast Hordes and the Empire both. And see this ship safe to port. We must mend the rift the Calamity has reopened twixt Pirate and Maelstrom. And stand fast with our adventurer brothers against the coming Tempest. Mark ye well. A crew without unity is no crew at all. Tis but a mass of drowned men. To me, then, brothers and sisters of the sea, gather beneath the undying crimson standard and pledge me your strength, your skill, your wisdom. And with the guidance of the Navigator, this great vessel of ours shall ride the waves till sea swallows all. Long live the Admiral! Admiral Melvin! Gather the lads! Oh, where's me cutlass? I'll follow ye to the seven hells, Admiral! Definitely a more stirring speech compared to the ones of Volda. Fancy meeting you again. And yeah. As the Admiral mentioned in her address, Limsa Lumens is plagued by two beast tribes. The first are the fish-like Sahagan, worshippers of the primal Leviathan. The second are the Kobolds, who dwell between, uh, beneath the earth and take the primal titan for their god. As if the beast tribe's presence weren't troublesome enough, the Garlings have also chosen to erect a portrait right in the Lemonson's backyard. And that is to say, not of the internal strife. As a nation of pirates, there is no end to the blood feeds between various factions. And while they fight amongst themselves, the Garlings wet their blade for and watch. If the Lemonsons are to have any hope of withstanding the Empire, they must first resolve their own affairs. Differences must be set aside, and the primal threat dealt at with once and for all. To this end, I expect that they will soon take a decisive action against the beast tribes. Like my words, the Maelstrom Standard will be drenched in a deeper shade of crimson ere long. That a capable adventurer like you would be a valuable addition to their crew is beyond question. Off they go again. You ate the Sminfilia. You were well, I hope. Would I be correct in thinking that the final remembrance service has not concluded? A moment ago, you say. What a coincidence! Jesting aside, I trust you remember our cash from the Grand Companies? Well, delighted though we are to have them here at the Waking Sands, it would do not to keep them in suspense any longer than necessary. In short, hurry back. Alrighty, off to the Waking Sands again we go. Let's go ahead and head back. We'll get there a little bit faster with a little help from our friend.
little too in the wrong direction, I think. Yep. Alright, in we go. Hi, Takara. Bye, Takara. Welcome back, Yue. Were the Grand Company leader's words as illuminating as you had hoped? Aye, each nation is beset with problems. I trust you see now why your services are in such great demand. Would that there would be more of you, Yue. But you must be tired from your journey. Why don't you rest a while and take a moment to reflect on your decision? Once your mind is made up, pray give the Grand Company officers your answer. Sounds good to me. The gods only know what grand company our adventurer friend will keep. Hm. The wheels of change are in motion regardless. Brother, are you certain this course is best? Whatever do you mean, dear sister? The so-called remembrance ceremonies were little more than standard waving rallies. As though the Calamity and Seventh Umbral Era warranted scarcely a mention. Well, of course they were standard waving rallies. Since you are so observant, mayhap you noticed what mention was made of the Warriors of Light? None. I suppose they must have forgotten the heroes who spared Eorzea a fate worse than the Calamity? No, dear Alizé, they haven't forgotten these details. They have elected to omit them. Deep are the wounds the Calamity inflicted upon Eorzea. So deep, in fact, that the realm still bleeds. Needless to say, the Beast Tribes and their primals do little to alleviate the pain. So, the task of salving Eorzea's wounds falls to the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, with a little help from our friends, the Grand Companies. Remembrance will yield no remedy. If our world is to heal, we must put the horrors of the Calamity behind us. Our grandfather would never entrust the fate of the realm to despots who rewrite history to their convenience. There must be another way to cure what ails this world, and I need to find it. You go, girl. You are most welcome to try. Our paths may differ, but our destination is the same. In time, I dare say, we will see eye to eye. I should hope so. M m my lady! We are to escort you! Hope does not come into it. We share the burden of this fate, dear sister, and will prevail together or not at all. The salve will serve not only to close up our present wounds, but prevent old ones from opening anew. You know, I don't remember that speech at all. Okay, now that they've continued, so it should be. I think the one I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the same one that I stuck with the first time, which is the Twin Adders. Now that's where I started off, and honestly, that was probably the best speech, at least to me. Ah, I take it the Elder Seatseer's words have touched your heart. Have you resolved to entwine your destiny with that of the Twin Adders? Yep. You have chosen wisely, my friend. The Elder Seats here will be overjoyed. Without further ado, let us speak of practical matters. In order to, com 
complete the enrollment procedure, you must report to the Adder's Nest. Alright, that'll be something that we'll do then. I dare say you know it well from your wanderings in New Gritania. Give your name to the personnel officer there, and he will guide you through the formalities. I have no doubt that your deeds will bring great honor to our order. When we next meet in Gridania, I shall be proud to call you brother. Alrighty then, brother, let us reconvene at the Adder's Nest. Come to the Adder's Nest headquarters of the Order of the Twin Adder. Ever do we welcome they who would toil uh, in the Elemental's name for the good of the Forest Nation. Uh, let's see. My name is Yoaheka. I believe you're expecting me. Or I'm here to arrest if you will have me. Uh, we'll go with the first one. Ah, the great adventurer himself. Yes, our recruitment officer sent word that you were on your way. It is a pleasure and an honor both to welcome you to our ranks, friend. Now, let me gather together the relevant uh, documentation. Sir! What is it? Report. An urgent message from the Amorasai Spire, sir. A Haiwan Skyways ship has taken fire from Imperial forces in the skies over the East Shroud. The vessel's engines were crippled, sir, and it was forced to make an emergency landing southeast of the Nine Ivies. Nine Ivies? Gods, this could not have come at a worse time. All but a handful of our forces are presently afield dealing with the Exal. Yue, I know full well that you have yet to be firmly inducted into our ranks, but we have great urgent need of your need, uh, aid. In all likelihood, the airship was bearing civilians, and, if the reports are accurate, it will have come down dangerously low to the Gridanian occupied territory. Please make all haste into the area southeast of the Ninth Ivies, locate the airship, and ascertain the status of the passengers. Well, sounds like we got our first question for the Twin Adders. Before we go there, let's make a little adjustment. To where it Let's go ahead and continue on. We need to head to the Nine Ivies. So we'll pull up parts of Hawthorne Head. Let's see. We'll go ahead and fly on over. Stormy. So there's the airship. And here's the crewman. And we'll go to normal.
Oh shit. Oh, okay. An adventurer? What are you doing out here? No, wait. Let's find some cover first. The Adder's Nest sent to you? How do I know you're not an Imperial spy? You don't even have a uniform. Peace, friend. We mean you no harm. You are an engineer at Godlon, uh, Garlon's Ironworks, are you not? We were alerted to your plight and have come to rescue you. And you are a Uaheka, I presume. I was told to expect an honorary serpent. My thanks to your aid, my friend. Honestly, the green really helps them since they're in a green area. I've never seen a craft of this design. It must be Garland's work. Is there no end to the man's treachery? The secrets of magic tech belong in Imperial hands. They are not to be squandered on Eorzean savages. Uh-oh. We are taking this craft back to the fortress. Dismantle it if you must. And bring the engineer. Someone must pay for Galan's crimes. Uh-oh. Imperial scouts from Kasrin Ornus. They mean to requisition the ship. Wedge, you have to help him. That fool of Lollafil was hiding inside the tiny Bronco. The tiny Bronco? But isn't that the Ironworks' latest creation? It is the first airship we built since Calamity. The first since Master Garland, well, since he went missing. After years of work, she was finally ready for her first test flight. And then she was soaring. She really was. Till those bastards blasted her out of the sky. Attend me all. The Ironworks' latest creation must not fall into Garlean hands. We shall strike them swift and sure. And rescue the Engineer Wedge. Yue, I trust we can rely on your support. Of course. May the matron watch over us. With me! All right, it's fighting time. An ambush to arms. All right, let's get into it. Oh, we'll take care of the long distance one. So the range is still first. Keep them away from the airship. Says Imperial Decurion. Leave none standing, serpent. Um, Gladiator says. Alright, that's one down. Two. And last one. Savages! You cannot stand against the might of the Empire, said the Imperial Decurion. This has gone long enough, said the Imperial Decurion. Uh-oh. More coming. Oh, Vanguards. 
annihilate these barbarians. Teach them the brutality of the resistance. All right, so we'll start off with the Thunder And then the Vanguard. Where's he going? Oh. They're really walking all over. I wonder, can I know help kill them? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Oh, it's not AOE wise. That's okay, it's over. What? You shouldn't have stayed with the ship. Th that was a close one. Too damn close. So, how's she look anyways? The auxiliary propeller is dead lost. But I think we can bring enough thrust from the main propeller to get us airborne. A few minor modifications, and we should be able to fly the tiny Bronco home. While you do your work, we shall keep watch over the perimeter. The enemy may yet be lurking nearby. As for you, Yue, you have more than done your part today. I bid you return to the Adder's Nest and complete your enlistment. I pray there will be no further interruptions. When we next meet, let it be as fellow serpents of the Order. I, um... Just wanted to say sorry, you know, for calling you an Imperial spy and all that. Got that one wrong, didn't I? <laughs> Seriously, though. If it hadn't been for you and the Twin Adders lad here, we'd be chained up in a dungeon by now. I meant your dead friend. We both are. Wedge? Thank you. We're very grateful. 